Whether you've configured a router before or you're a new user, you may or may not be familiar with VPN. There are multiple types of VPN, so we want to take a moment to explain the different types and how they compare. First, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it is a means of connecting devices to each other remotely. Since the connections over the VPN are private, they are generally secure, but some VPN types provide more security than others. When it comes to VPN connections, there are two types the Peplink hardware supports. One is considered a client-to-site connection, and one is considered a site-to-site -site connection. Client-to-site means you are connecting a personal device, such as your cell phone, tablet, or laptop, to a router at a remote location. Our personal device is the client, and the site, or server, as it's sometimes referred, is our Peplink router. That being said, in the case of a site-to-site -site VPN connection, this is a connection between two or more routers. Client-to-site VPN connections include L2TP with IPsec, PPTP, and OpenVPN. As an example, let's say we're at the local coffee shop, connected to their free Wi-Fi with our laptop. If we want to do some online banking securely, we can connect to the Peplink router at our home using any of these VPN connections. However, it's important to note that this is only possible if the internet connection at your home has a publicly routable IP address, such as a static IP. This means it can be accessed from an outside connection, provided it has the correct information and credentials to do so. Once we're connected to the VPN, any information that we send and receive through our laptop is going to be encapsulated and transmitted securely from the coffee shop Wi-Fi through the open internet and back to our Pepwave at home. This protects us from any potential threats on the coffee shop Wi-Fi network, and it also lets us access local devices on our Pepwave, such as security cameras or a hard drive, all as if we were connected directly to our home network. While we take a quick look at the Peplink configuration pages, we want to make sure this is clear. Our laptop, in this case, still requires an internet connection. It cannot use the internet connection from your Pepwave at home. It's simply a means to secure your connection over a public network while simultaneously providing remote access to devices on your home network if needed. That brings us to the site-to-site -site VPN connections. All Peplink and Pepwave routers support PepVPN, which is Peplink's simple approach to Internet Protocol Security VPN, or IPsec VPN for short. Most hardware also supports IPsec. This does not include Wi-Fi access points, the Surf Soho MK3, or outdoor-rated hardware. Just like with client-to-site VPNs, site-to-site -site VPN connections will require a static or public internet IP address on at least one of the routers. Here's a preview of each site-to-site -site VPN. IPsec is up first. Site-to-site -site connections are typically made for sharing access to devices and files across each network. IPsec is a common VPN protocol used by several router manufacturers. On your Peplink or Pepwave router, IPsec can be used to connect to another Peplink or Pepwave router, as well as Cisco and Juniper routers. Though when you're using all Peplink and Pepwave hardware, PepVPN is a comparable method that will save you time. As you'll see here, PepVPN works in the same manner as IPsec, meaning they both provide a way of connecting two remote networks together. Here's a view of the PepVPN configuration profile. The difference in settings is quite obvious, you still have enough for what's needed, but in most cases, this is all we'll have to enter, name, encryption, authentication, and remote IP address or host name on one router. The rest are default settings. Before moving on, there's one more thing we want to clarify. As common as hacking is these days, there's several VPN services you can pay for that advertise they'll protect your internet traffic. Along with features like content blocking, the VPN service masks your IP address with a random one from their servers providing you the secure connection. Services like these usually consist of a program you can download onto your computer, mobile device, and in some cases, your router. Until Peplink released firmware 8.1.1, this was not supported. Now, users have the option to purchase an OpenVPN WAN license, but it will still require the use of a third party for the OpenVPN access. Peplink's PepVPN can be used to build a reliable network with minimal setup. But what is PepVPN exactly? This is proprietary to Peplink and Pepwave hardware and is built upon the same engine that is used by the speed fusion bonding technology. 
Like IPsec, VPN, PEP VPN is a device-to-device -device VPN protocol that is extremely easy to set up and configure. It provides a full 256-bit AES encryption and is compatible with any existing PEPLink and PEPWAVE hardware. To give you a real-world example, let's say we have a Balance 380 at our primary office and we're using a Max BR1 in the remote office. Using PEP VPN, we have a very simple way to connect to remote networks to allow communication between networks and devices as well as share network resources. The first thing we'll do is configure the Max BR1. To enable PEP VPN, we'll give it a local ID. This is a unique name used to create the VPN tunnel. We'll need to make note of this ID as it will be entered on the Balance 380. Save and apply changes. Once applied, click New Profile. Every profile requires a name. We'll call this London Office since that's the name of the remote network. Enable should be checked. Encryption will default to 256-bit AES or you can turn it off. Remote ID is going to be the local ID of the network you're trying to connect to, in our case this is London. Pre-shared key is an optional field that we'll fill in for added security. This must match on each router's configuration. NAT mode will typically be disabled unless your routers need to use the same IP address. The next field is for remote IP addresses or host names. This is going to be where you fill in the public IP address or dynamic domain name of the remote network. In other words, this is the external IP address of its internet connection. This only has to be filled in on one side of the tunnel. Our Balance 380 uses public static IP addresses, so we'll need to enter those here. Note that the VPN can connect with just one address. The rest of the settings, cost, data port, and receive buffer will remain default for most users. The other options under WAN connection priority apply to the WAN links to be used for the VPN. Now that this part is done, we'll click save and apply changes. The next step is to configure our Balance 380 VPN profile. This is located under the network tab. You'll notice that the local ID is set for London, which is what we just entered in on the BR1 profile as its remote ID. Just like on the BR1, we'll create a new profile with New York office as the name. We'll make sure encryption is set, fill in our remote ID and pre-shared key, and since we already have a remote IP address set on the BR1, we can leave this blank. We can also turn off some WAN connections here if we like. Click Save then Apply Changes. After applying changes, we can move back to the dashboard of either router and see the PEP VPN status. It will take a moment, but you will soon see a new section appear called PEP VPN with Speed Fusion. The status will show starting, followed by creating tunnels. Though sometimes, like in this case, it moves directly to updating routes. Each router obtains the necessary network data and finally the status will show established. If you get stuck here, confirm your configuration and firmware match. If needed, reboot the routers. To look at some information about your PEP VPN connection, we can click on the status button over here to the right. The information shown tells you the IP of the remote network that you're communicating with. When you click on the blue arrow, it will tell you which links we have active and the red and green boxes signify which links are actually connected to the VPN profile. From here, you can also run tests on your connection, though those are more helpful when utilizing Speed Fusion.